Good morning. This is the second Sunday in the season of Easter. Our opening hymn is hymn 193. 193. Risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. And in the earth, we good will toward him. We praise thee. We bless thee.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery has established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. And when Peter saw he had addressed the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To these we are witnesses. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers, but what God forced are foretold by the mouth of all the prophets and that that his Christ would suffer he thus fulfilled. Repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the Christ appointed For you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. Moses said, The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your heart uh, or from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you. And it shall be that every soul who does not listen to the prophet shall be destroyed from the people. And all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who came after him also proclaimed these these days. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God, having raised up his servants, sent him to you first to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. The word of the Lord. And we'll read Psalm 111 responsibly by whole verse. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Full of splendor and majesty is his work and his righteousness endures forever. He has provides food for those who fear him. 
He remembers his covenant forever. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The epistle reading for today is a reading from the book of 1 John, chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not bur burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? The word of the Lord. Thanks. Our gradual hymn is hymn 508. Hymn 508. Please stand. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
according to St. John. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. <coughs> Let us pray. God, our Holy Father, be at work among us. May your Spirit be at work in our hearts, transforming us. Feed us with your word and holy sacrament this morning. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, we're observing the second Sunday of Easter. It's often considered a low Sunday, and many of us are still tired from the activities of Holy Week. But even though we may be facing some exhaustion and mental strain, we are still in the Easter tide. We are still considering the great victory of our Savior over sin, death, and the devil. And we are to rejoice in what God has done for us through his Son. So this morning, I'd like for us to do something a little bit different than normal. To help us in our consideration of the resurrection, I'd like for us to follow the example of our brothers and sisters in the Christian East and read for you the Paschal homily of that great preacher and church father, St. John Chrysostom. The Christian East traditionally reads this homily during Matins of Pascha, but I thought it would be helpful for us to hear it the week after Easter. As you will hear, it's a rich and powerful homily, and it's direct and punchy. You'll also probably like that it's quite short, particularly for Chrysostom, and he gets right to the point. 
And I think it's an important message for us to hear, and it connects us with brothers and sisters around the world, and it connects us to our forebears in the early church. I think it is good for us to hear how the church has taught about the resurrection and celebrated it throughout her history, and to hear God's word proclaimed by somebody with a different vocabulary, cultural context, and concerns. So as I read this for us, please give it careful attention as this faithful man of God continues to proclaim the truth of God's word to us long after he has gone on to his reward. And so now, the words from John Chrysostom. If any man be devout and love God, let him enjoy this fair and radiant triumphal feast. If any man be a wise servant, let him rejoicing enter into the joy of his Lord. If any have labored long in fasting, let him now receive his recompense. If any have wrought from the first hour, let him today receive his just reward. If any have come at the third hour, let him with thankfulness keep the feast. If any have arrived at the sixth hour, let him have no misgivings, because he shall in no wise be deprived thereof. If any have delayed until the ninth hour, let him draw near, fearing nothing. If any have tarried even until the eleventh hour, let him also be not alarmed at his tardiness. For the Lord who is jealous of his honor will accept the last even as the first. He gives rest unto him who comes at the eleventh hour, even as unto him who has wrought from the first hour. And he shows his mercy upon the last and cares for the first. And to the one he gives, and upon the other he bestows gifts. And he both accepts the deeds and welcomes the intention and honors the acts and praises the offering. Wherefore, enter you all into the joy of your Lord and receive your reward, both the first and likewise the second. You rich and poor together hold high festival. You sober and you heedless honor the day. Rejoice today, both you who have fasted and you who have disregarded the fast. The table is full laden. Feast ye all sumptuously. The calf is fatted. Let no one go hungry away. Enjoy ye all the feast of faith. Receive ye all the riches of loving kindness. Let no one bewail his poverty, for the universal kingdom has been revealed. Let no one weep for his iniquities, for pardon has shone forth from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the Savior's death has set us free. He that was held prisoner of it has annihilated it. By descending into hell, he made hell captive. He embittered it, and when it tasted of his flesh. And Isaiah, foretelling this, did cry. Hell, said he, was embittered when it encountered thee in the lower regions. It was embittered, for it was abolished. It was embittered, for it was mocked. It was embittered, for it was slain. It was embittered, for it was overthrown. It was embittered, for it was fettered in chains. It took a body and met God face to face. It took earth and encountered heaven. It took that which was seen and fell upon the unseen. <clears throat> o death, where is your sting? O hell, where is your victory? Christ is risen and you are overthrown. Christ is risen, and the demons are fallen. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. 
Christ is risen and life reigns. Christ is risen and not one dead remains in the grave. For Christ, being risen from the dead, has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and dominion unto ages of ages. Amen. And now let us stand together and confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible. not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth unity and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We beseech thee also so to lead the nations of the world into the way of righteousness and so to direct and dispose and do and so to direct and dispose the hearts of their leaders, especially Joseph, our president, Greg, our governor, the Congress and the courts, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, upholding integrity and truth to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Lord, in thy mercy, give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant Foley, our Archbishop, Ryan, our Bishop, Keith, our Assisting Bishop, Jack, our Bishop Emeritus, T. 
Timothy, Christopher, David, and Vicki are clergy, and Fanuel, the Bishop of Northern Malawi, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and strengthen us to fulfill thy great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them, and teaching them to obey all that thou hast commanded. Especially these outreach ministries of Good Shepherd, Diocese of Northern Malawi, La Grande Familia, Brazos Pregnancy Center, Camp Crucis, the staff and board of managers, Good Shepherd Pantry, Sandwich Ministry, and Stephen Ministry. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Carol and Ron Drake, Deacon Vicki, Father Cardona and family, Father Christopher Steele, Seal, Ken, uh, Ken Maddox, Father John and Camelia Allen, Elizabeth, Deborah, Randy, Carol, Marie, Marcy, John, Laurel, Karen Cantrell and family, Hagen, our deployed troops, those who are in jails and prisons. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants who have departed this life in faith and fear, especially Kelly, that thy will for them may be fulfilled, and we beseech thee to give us grace to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter 
serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also at St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please stand now for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God is not unrighteous, that he will forget your works, and labor that proceedeth of love, which love ye have showed for his name's sake, who have ministered unto the saints, and yet do minister. Our hymn is hymn 518, hymn 518. Sure, proud. 
things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb, which was offered for us, and hath taken away the sin of the world. Who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, and earth are full of thy glory. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou, of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction, for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and of thine almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures, bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. We, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death. 
his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body, blo body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bound in duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Oh, Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon Gifts of God for the people of God. 
Take the remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Our post-communion hymn is hymn 490, hymn 490. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as Thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with Thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Well, good morning to all of you. Um, it's so wonderful to see you. Thank you for joining us on this low Sunday. Um, and it's always a privilege to worship with you each week, as each week we do celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, but particularly during Eastertide. So thank you so much for joining us today. I do have 
a number of announcements today, so I'm going to try to go through these quickly. Um, the first one is please note that this week our midweek service is not actually going to be the middle of the week. It's actually going to be tomorrow night. The reason that we are moving our Wednesday night service to Monday is that a feast day has actually transferred. So on March 25th, we traditionally observe the Feast of the Annunciation. And that is the time where the angel Gabriel announces to Mary about the birth of our Lord. Um, if you're wondering why it's March 25th, um, count nine months from March 25th, and it takes you to December 25th, which is Christmas Day. So, you know, somebody at some point decided it should be nine months. Um, so we celebrate the Feast of the Annunciation. So on years where the Feast of the Annunciation shows up during Holy Week, it actually gets moved to the Monday after the week of Easter, which is tomorrow. Now, I know it's 5.30. I know tomorrow there's like an eclipse, which we may or may not see because of cloud cover and all of that, right? So the eclipse is like at noon. And I know there are people, like there's parking and stuff at churches around here. Um, that's all supposed to be done by four, right? So you should all have a whole hour and a half for traffic to clear out. So please join us for this. I know all that's happening, but you know what? We are the church, you know? Solar eclipses events and all, Super Bowls, you know, we don't care. We show up and we meet and worship God at the appointed time. So tomorrow night is going to be our normal weekly evening service, right? I want to be clear about that. If you come on Wednesday night, there is not going to be a service. It's tomorrow. So please join us for that if you're able to. Um, everything else, as far as I know, is normal, normal services and studies for the rest of the week. The next thing I'd like to announce is that um, we're going to, every year there is a Bishop Iker golf tournament, and I know several of you participate in that. Starting next week, we'll be selling tickets and all for that, and there'll be more details forthcoming. Just know, this is, this is sort of like your save the date, right? Like starting next week, we'll have more information and more details about buying tickets for that, but know that it's coming. Um, and, and other things that, that are coming up um, that we can help out with the diocese um, on Saturday, April 20th, so two weeks from yesterday, is a work day out at our diocesan camp, Camp Crucis. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with Camp Crucis. Um, many of our priests, many of the leaders in our diocese were formed there. Um, I'm, I'm sure many of you also went to Camp Crucis in your youth. It, it has been a vital part of our mission as the diocese. It's usually twice a year in the spring and in the fall, we have a work day where we are prepping, especially in the, the spring, we are prepping for campers. Um, there's all sorts of amazing things happening at camp. Um, we have finally redone the pool, which has been in desperate need of that. There's been, there's been this water slide that's not been used in years that every year the campers come out and they're just crushed because they see like this water slide adjacent to the pool that they can't use. But we've had contractors come in. The, 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 it's all going to be ready. It's super exciting. There are really amazing things happening at camp. So if you all have a hankering to go out and enjoy the, the sort of nice spring weather we've had and help out um, a ministry in our diocese, that is coming up in two weeks. We'll put some information up on a bulletin board and send it out in an email. Um, but, but just make note of that. That's going to be from about 9 to 3 over at Camp Crucis and lunch will be provided. Um, and then we have, in a couple weeks, we have Good Shepherd Sunday, and I think um, Julia Reed, our senior warden, has an announcement about that. On, um 21st, Good Shepherd Sunday, we're also going to honor Father um, Tim and his family on their year anniversary of being here, and it's also going to be an opportunity for us to celebrate Father's birthday, which fell during Holy Week, so our dearest Diana has made some sign-up sheets for food, and I would appreciate if we could have one or two gentlemen who'd be willing to flip burgers for us um, that... Uh, that morning after church, we're going to have just a little picnic, maybe outside, maybe inside. Um, and so there's a sign-up sheet for some sides. So thank you in advance for your willingness to help with that. We're also today going to honor uh, Janie Parrott after the service. And our dearest Susan made what we think is Janie's favorite cake, we heard, through the grapevine. 
<laughs> so we are going to enjoy uh, that cake and in some time to honor Janie and other people brought food. So thank you for everyone who brought food as well. Um, at the end of the table over in the fellowship hall, you'll see a little journal and that's going to be a journal we're going to give Janie um, and we'll share some words about her over there. But please take that. That's an opportunity for all of you to just write her a note because I know it's we're all together, sometimes it gets busy, and you mean to say something and you don't, or she hears from a whole bunch of people and then can't remember what you said. So if you just want write to a, write a quick note to her and thank her for the work that she's done, she's certainly brought great credit upon herself and on our parish and the diocese in her, in her service. So thank you. So yes, please join us for, for, for those events, both the um, Good Shepherd Sunday and be clear, it is, it's Good Shepherd Sunday. It is not just Father Tim Sunday. Um, those things are also, I guess, being commemorated that day. But, but you know, we are the Church of the Good Shepherd, right? So it is our, is our feast day. And we thought that this year we should try to honor the day of our, our church's feast day and kind of do it up a little bit. So please join us for that. It's not just about me. Please don't make it just about me. It's about our church and what God is doing here. Uh, all right, I think those are, I think... Um, those are all of the announcements. So, oh, sorry, one, one more thing. Um, we do, you see these lovely Easter lilies up here? Um, if you would like one, after the service is over, please come and take one. In fact, um, you are welcome to take more than one if you so desire. Um, I have been instructed to announce that to all of you. So if you would like to take some Easter lilies, this is your, well, right, not right now, but after the service is your chance to do it. Um, you know, it's Easter, so you know, this is, you know, you can, you can feast and take a bunch of flowers, right? Like, this is not a judgmental moment. Like, if you decide you really want, like, four of them, like, take four. We are celebrating, right? It is Easter tide, so we can do this. No one will think ill of you. Please come after the service for that. Now, is there anybody, I know there's at least one birthday that we are going to remember today. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries that we can pray for. And as they all come forward, if you'd like to pray along with us, the birthday prayer is page 666 of the Book of Common Prayer. And then I'm going to pray for Clay and Patty first for their anniversary. And in how many years of 42. That is amazing. Um, you all been married longer than I've been alive. By a year. By a year. Uh, but that is fantastic. Uh, let us pray that God would continue to bless both of you in your marriage. O oh God, who has so consecrated the covenant of marriage, that in it is represented the spiritual union between Christ and his church, send thy blessing upon these thy servants as they begin another year, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness, and patience, and wisdom in true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty be upon you both in your marriage this year. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then let us together pray for our brother Aiden for his birthday. O oh God, our times are in thy hand. Look with favor, we beseech thee on thy servant Aiden, as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in thy goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty be upon you in this next year of your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And why don't we celebrate these folks for, for the birthday and the anniversary? And again, please join us over at the Parish Hall, if you can, for um, the refreshments and also a chance to um, offer our praise and thanksgiving and gratitude to Janie for all of her faithful service at the church.
The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn is hymn 182. Hymn 182. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.